Good afternoon. If there's one brand as a marketer, which you all would have heard of, and I'm sure studied as case studies, it is the MasterCard brand. The brand reinvented itself with its priceless campaign, and we have Mr. Raja Rajam Rajamanar with us to speak about more about the brand. So, Thank you for having me, Sibra. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, sir, you had a session at the Cannes Line Festival, and uh, you know the two words in your session were happy intention. These are two words that usually do not go together. But your session was called Happy Tension, the power of CMO and CFO partnership. So how do you see the relationship between the CMO and CFO evolved in the last five to six years? So firstly, you're absolutely right. The two words, happy and tension, you don't put them in the same sentence, right? And right. that was intentional, how we put it together. Historically, there was always and there is always a tension between the CFOs and the CMOs of organizations. While the larger objective of both is to drive the results of the company for the better, the immediate focus of both is very different. The CMO is focused on three pillars. Is my brand moving in the right direction? Is it really becoming stronger by the day? Uh, is it being more preferred by the consumers and so on? Then the second pillar is, is marketing driving the business results? Uh, whether it is top of the line funnel or it's the bottom of the funnel, it's about the margin improvement, it's retention, loyalty. All these are concerns that marketers have on the business side. Then you've got a third one where marketers you want their focus on is on building platforms that give the company an advantage, a competitive advantage on an ongoing basis. So these are the three pillars that marketers are focused on. Now, something like a brand may not be immediately producing results for you within the same quarter. So when you're having a huge brand spend, it's very natural that people outside of marketing, particularly the CFO can say, why are we spending this and why can't we actually take it back? Sure. Particularly during times of economic crisis, when the company's results get to be a little under pressure, you've got revenue, you've got expense, and then you've got your uh, EBITDA. So when you look at your revenue, if the revenue is coming down, you have to cut back your expenses. For a CFO to cut back expenses, there are three big heads. One is you have got your people, second you got technology, third is you got marketing. People, you don't want to play with people quarter to quarter. Technology has long lead times either to start up or to close. So people, particularly CFOs, find it easier to gravitate to marketing, to take either funds out of in a short term or to give funds more funds. Either way, they see a lot of fungibility in how marketing pools operate. Now, that is where the problem lies in, because in, during the economic crisis, if a brand pulls back on its investment, it will lose ground, particularly if the competitors are not pulling back. And the amount of money you have to spend to regain your ground is going to be huge. Well, business results seem to be something which are more appreciated immediately. Brand's impact on business results is less understood and less appreciated. But the fault of that is also of CMOs where you have to make your colleagues understand. You have to evangelize, and you have to not evangelize based on emotion, but based on facts, based on data, and you need to understand the language of the CFO. Now, this is where the tension ha actually happens. And so this time, actually, what I decided is to share with the group uh, from the main stage of Can Lions on day one uh, with my colleague and the chief financial officer of MasterCard. So both of us, we took the stage together, and we started telling what is life from each one of our respective lenses and how do we crack the code at MasterCard in an effective way. So now I consider my CFO as a best buddy, a great partner, and it's been working for years. And so I was actually diving into those areas and explaining to people that tension will always remain. There's no question about it. But you can make it a happy tension by understanding each other well, by talking in each other's language, and coming to certain working arrangement where you make them as in finance folks understand what marketing's real impact is. And for us as marketers to understand what is the predicament of the CFOs, particularly when there is an economic downturn. Rightly, sir, because even whenever you see uh, when the economic downturn is, turn, uh, is here, like you mentioned, the marketing budgets are first cut. And you also use the word evangelize. Mm -hmm. 
So if you could just uh, tell, you know, of a conversation which you had with your CFO and how did you evangelize him? So I'll tell you, in fact, uh, my conversation with one of the previous CFOs, it was very interesting. And uh, there were a lot of questions about does really brand matter? Okay. Because, you know, if you go and you give a fantastic price either to your client, which is a bank or a merchant, things will happen. Why do you really have to build a brand for the consumers, etc.? Not to say that the brand is unimportant, but the amount of money that we spend on brand, is it really worth it? I just asked the person, which watch are you wearing? Of course, it was a luxury brand. So I said, why do you wear this? Because at the end of the day, this particular brand that you're wearing only shows time and nothing else. I can give you, a, and that would have cost them you know, thousands of dollars. I can give you a small Casio watch, which will cost you less than $5. It will show time, it has calculator, it has contact, it has so many functionalities. You being a CFO, how can you be so irrational and buy that luxury item as opposed to this? I said, that is the power of brand. I think that was an aha moment to that individual. So we go in this kind of a fashion, you have to take time to educate them. And you have to understand why they feel in a particular way. When you understand the root causes, you address those root causes in their language. Like, for example, you know, I spent half of my career managing P&Ls, businesses, right? And other half managing marketing. When I was managing P&Ls, I used to ask these tough questions to my marketing folks. What exactly am I getting for this investment I'm giving you? And many times I get the looks of a deer caught in headlights. In that kind of a situation, I won't get confidence. Or worse, if they start telling me, oh, my brand awareness has gone up and my predisposition has gone up. As a marketer, I understand, but as a business person, I said, that looks like a fluff. It's, okay. it's, it's a lot of fluff out there and you're waffling. I know. I want you to tell me, I'm asking you a question in dollars and cents. You answer me in dollars and cents. I need to understand. If I'm asking you time, tell me what time it is. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me time is philosophical and that it can move slowly if you're happy or fast, if you're not happy, whatever it is it is. I'm not interested in the philosophy. I want facts. That's what the CFOs and the CEOs are looking for. And so now when I come over on this side and as the chief marketing and communications officer for MasterCard, I'm acutely aware of this particular dynamic and therefore I try to speak always in the language of the CFO so that that person can understand exactly what I'm saying and be able to convince them. The CMO, the CFO, I'd like to introduce a third angle, the CTO. With technology being such a big part now, right. how is your relationship? Because it, it must have been a drastic change in the last 10 years and probably interactions with CTO has probably gone up multifold. So how is that change? So this is another excellent point that you make, which is CMOs don't operate in a vacuum. Okay. We need to collaborate with the CFO on the aspects that we just discussed. Marketing is increasingly and a lot more technology driven than ever before. And the future is going to be even more tech and data intensive. And you don't want to go off and build your own tech stacks or contract with third party vendors, because as a marketer, you may not be knowledgeable enough to make the right call, not just for today, but do you have a map? Do you understand how to get from here to there? Your CTO can be a brilliant partner. One of the things at MasterCard, what I have done is within my team, I have got a head of technology okay. who reports to me and also to the CTO. I have got a CFO who reports to me and also reports to the company CFO. And I have got a human resources person because that's another important point of intersection who reports into me and into the human resources head. So what we are trying to do is now marketing, therefore, is not just a standalone entity, which it is in one sense, mm -hmm. but it is extremely well integrated with other parts of the company on whom we are dependent quite a lot to make the company overall successful through the success of marketing. You know, everybody now is talking about experiences, but MasterCard was one of the first brands to actually deep dive into this. And it's been a decade since you've pivoted from advertising led marketing to an experience led marketing strategy. So how is this strategy of and the promise of creating priceless experiences helped MasterCard build brand recall as well as loyalty? So in fact, this is something which I feel particularly proud of. Right in 2013, uh, when I joined MasterCard, one of the first decisions I took was to pivot yeah. 
priceless from being an advertising platform to having your entire marketing strategy hinged on experiences. So we became an experiential marketing company in a big way. And uh, the result of that, if you just fast forward today, from number 87 in the top 100 brands, today we are at number nine. So we advanced 78 slots, which is not bad, right? And we are now a top 10 brand in the world. It is indeed. That's number one. We built a, uh, what do you call, audio brand. For the last four years, we have been rated as the world's number one audio brand. And we have, uh, if you look at our brand likability scores, if you look at the brand momentum, if you look at our brand affection scores, they are fortunately very, very good. So I think this strategy has been paying off extremely well for us. And I'm so glad that it have uh, embarked upon this 10 years back and it continues to work. And this is the direction that we continue to keep moving forward on. Now, we spoke about technology and one sector which has been significantly disrupted with technology has been the payment segment. Mm -hmm. uh, now, digitization, I'm talking particularly from the India standpoint of view. Digitization, I've seen, the, uh, you know, with UPI, we've seen the rise of Rupay, GPay, WhatsApp payments. So how is Mar uh, MasterCard evolving its marketing strategy in this scenario? So firstly, we should look at payments as an enabling activity uh, okay so for example i'm not waking up or nobody wakes up in the morning saying that oh i need to today i want to make payment on on a, uh, on a soap or a shampoo or on a movie ticket they want the movie ticket they want the soap they want the shampoo that's what they think about and payment is an enabler right when more companies actually come in into the digital space because today digital payments are still a tiny fraction of the entire payments space. So there is a lot of opportunity to convert from cash and checks into digital payments. So when many companies come in, consumer education goes up, consumers awareness goes up, and all the companies rise, it's all the boats rise when the tide goes up, that's number one. Number two, what we try to do is to always look at what is it that the consumer truly wants and can we be there providing experiences that are truly priceless which means we connect you to you something which you are passionate about uh, in a way that only mastercard can do it part of it we do it through our priceless platforms uh, part of it we would do it through our product construct part of it we do by running certain kinds of loyalty programs etc and uh, like i'll just give you an example you know in india i always keep joking that the three religions in India are cricket, Bollywood, and music, right? So we got into cricket last year with a partnership with PCCI. It has worked like a charm. What we did there, the way we activated was not very traditional, like what typically a brand does. We went very, very uh, 360 and in very unusual and unexpected fashion. That resulted in a wonderful lift in some of our brand scores in some of our brand preferences and so on. It, it really works very well. And I think, you know, so the key thing is we are not scared of competition. Uh, at the same time, we are hopefully smart enough to see the opportunities to connect with the consumers uh, and influence their preference in favor of our brand as opposed to somebody else's brand. Uh, can you elaborate on the kind of uptick that you've seen post the BCCI association? What I can say is it is significant. Uh, unfortunately, we do not reveal in the media what specifics are, uh, but I can clearly say, and you can quote me on it, that MasterCard has seen significant uptake in terms of how the brand is being perceived. Post the BCCI Post the association. BCCI association. Um, now, the chatter at Khan this year has been all about AI and chat GPT. You also, you know, priceless expressions is what MasterCard goes by. Mm -hmm. So how do you see this integration for do you see AI being integrated into the MasterCard marketing strategy to deliver priceless experiences? So, you know, this is one of the common misperceptions that AI is a new phenomenon. We have been infusing AI into marketing and to every aspect of marketing at MasterCard for the last seven years. So, for example, about four years back, we launched something called the MasterCard Digital Marketing Engine which we developed and launched out of Singapore. That 
would actually deploy, there be deployed artificial intelligence to be able to predict what the next micro trend will be yeah. and intelligently look at all the offers and messages that we have in our repository, pick out the most optimal either offer or promotion or communication message and then leverage that in the context where that message is given or the offer is made and it buys media, it creates an ad, it does A-B testing, it optimizes the ad, measures the ROI. All this was automated and AI was at the center of it. It was a few years back, four years back plus. So AI is not new. Generative AI is what is new. So it has really literally broke open into the world, so to speak. And uh, there is so much amount of excitement around chat GPT and, uh, you know, DAL E and uh, mid journey uh, and all these wonderful uh, AI generative AI tools, whether it is for creating images or creating music or creating, uh, what do you call uh, uh, text, etc. And uh, we are actually very carefully looking at everything. We don't want to rush in and do something because uh, generative AI, if it is trained on public data or data that belongs to somebody else, there are IP related issues we have to be careful about. There are things which can creep in which have got intrinsic bias. We have to be careful about that. So what we are now doing is to train AI, generative AI engines on internal MasterCard data or internal MasterCard communications, etc., and then come up with things that we can say this is based on our own proprietary information and we are not really you know, taking anything from the public. So this is something which we are on, but I'm extremely excited about the possibilities. Finally, you mentioned about cricket, but MasterCard has also associated with women's cricket, badminton, golf. So what next can we expect from MasterCard in the Indian context? Any big sponsorship up on the anvil? Uh, we're constantly looking for opportunities. Right. And when some good opportunity comes, we do a cost benefit analysis. And if it proves to be attractive, we absolutely go in and then do it. If it fits also with our strategy, obviously. So it has to be a strategic fit. It has to be economically attractive. And then we just go and do it. And you're right. We went into badminton. We went into cricket. And, uh, you know, we, we will constantly keep looking for opportunities. Right? We went into golf, for example, in India. And uh, it's, it's a journey. And uh, you will hopefully uh sort of you know see more action coming from mastercard and i cannot say exactly what is going to happen but things will happen thank you so much for your time sir much thank you appreciate it. thank you so much for having this in thank you